my first video discussing the alignments of some Game of Thrones characters was enjoyable, but also quite challenging. So, how about some more? Tywin Lannister. Lawful evil. Who can forget old grandpappy Lannister? Tywin is most definitely lawful. He is a man of laws, of diplomacy, alliances, politics, and orderly conduct. Throughout large sections of the books and TV series, he is the most powerful authority in Westeros. Even whilst Joffrey and Tommen sit the Iron Throne, it is Tywin who calls the shots when it comes to many of the big issues. He's a thoughtful man, a strategist, and a well-spoken planner. When it comes to morals, Tywin is too cold-blooded for me to consider neutral. After all, he conspired with the likes of the Boltons and the Freys to murder House Stark at the Red Wedding. Yes, their houses were at war, however, this deed was downright vile. He also commands the Mountain, Gregor Clegane, one of the most monstrous characters in the realm. Tywin has no regrets about his men committing atrocities, just so long as they are doing so against enemies or third parties. His heartlessness is also revealed when we look at Tysha and Shay. Both were whores who had relationships with Tyrion. Tyrion genuinely loved each of them, going so far as to marry Tysha when he was younger. Tywin had a group of his soldiers rape Tysha in front of Tyrion, then sent her away forever. Then years later, after Tyrion was charged guilty of murdering Joffrey, he discovered that Tywin was having some sort of affair with Shay. So, Tywin does have some admirable qualities when it comes to strength, knowledge, sophistication, and military expertise, but like many Lannisters, he is rotten at his core. Brienne of Tarth, lawful good. I will admit that I didn't care for Brienne too much at first, but throughout A Feast for Crows, I continuously enjoyed her chapters, both because of her backstory, her brutal fight scenes, and the fascinating discussions that she got into. She is also another clear-cut lawful character for me, as she believes in oaths, promises, discipline, and orderly behavior. She is also doggedly stubborn. She is a mold breaker in the sense that she's a female warrior, but unlike so many other movies and shows that force annoying girl power characters onto the audience, Brienne feels like a real person. And she's not a renegade YOLO warrior woman. She wants to follow the codes of knightly conduct and the proper usage of arms and armor. And deep inside, she truly does want love and to find a gallant husband. Which leads me into why I see Brienne as good aligned. She believes in love and she respects people who are compassionate and honorable. She gravitated to Renly Baratheon because he was a likable man with honor and a good heart. When Brienne makes pledges to Renly, Catelyn Tully, Sansa Stark, and even Jaime Lannister, you know she was a woman of truth. Jaime Lannister, <laughs> neutral. I stared at the name Jamie Lannister for minutes and minutes trying to pin down his alignment. He is another character whose deeper facets reveal slowly over time. The moment I first started empathizing with him, my heart felt so conflicted. I hated him. I wasn't supposed to be rooting for him. This is called character development, my friends. Deep level character development. Jamie is a mix of discipline and impulse. Depending upon the situation, 
Thus, I cannot consider him fully lawful nor chaotic. The fact that he is a knight of the King's Guard and one of the best swordsmen in the world shows his commitment and rigorous training. He also has moments when he displays great loyalty to the people he cares about. But he also breaks laws and rules when he feels like it. Or in the case of killing Mad King Eris, when he knew that breaking his sacred vows was the right thing to do. In the earlier parts of the series, Jamie is cocky, willful, and sometimes unpredictable. But in the later parts, he reels in this wilder aspect of himself. Jamie begins as an evil character. He's willing to murder if it serves his benefit or if he really doesn't like someone. The moment he murdered his cousin Alton in an attempt to escape the Stark's war camp, I hated him. But as the story progresses, we start to learn more about some of the reasons behind his actions. He loses his sword hand, he learns some humility, and his heart begins to change towards a somewhat higher moral path. The thing I try to keep in mind with Jamie is that he is a warrior trained from childhood in a brutal medieval world. Warriors fight and kill their enemies, and especially they do what they must in the hell that is war. Jamie remains gray and edgy, and the stains of his past will forever haunt him. But he has enough redeeming qualities and deeds for me to see him as not truly evil. Melisandre of Ashai, Lawful Neutral. Melisandre is another character who strikes me as lawful without a second thought. She follows her religious prophecies and philosophical codes with zeal and courage. She also conducts herself in a highly composed fashion. Furthermore, she is a person of control as she tries to win over anyone with whom she speaks. She has that ideal pushing characteristic possessed by many classic lawful archetypes such as the priest, the zealot, the judge, the manipulator, the lawmaker, and the philosopher. Some people believe that Melisandre is an evil character, and I can see that argument to an extent. But if you look at the bigger picture, the darker things she does, namely human sacrifice, are within the context of her religion. And the entire point of her religious conviction is to defeat the true evil, which is the Others, aka the White Walkers and their undead armies. Yes, Melisandre has killed people in her fires, but she didn't do it for profit, for political power, or even because she didn't like those people. She did it because she truly believes in the Lord of Light, and that she is working to save the world from being overran by the forces of evil. So, I suppose I could summarize her as such. A sorceress priestess who sometimes misinterprets prophecy and who applies brutal religious practices with the intention of saving the world from the doom of the eternal night. And she brought Jon Snow back to life, who is probably a Zorahai, though in a different way than anyone expects. <sighs> Oberyn Martell, Chaotic Neutral. Prince Oberyn the Red Viper is a man of passions. He is fueled by adventure, lust, combat, and most of all, revenge. He may not be the wildest man in existence, but he does not play by the rules. He does his own thing, when he wants, how he wants, even when he gets involved in law and politics, it's because that's just what he wants in that moment. It's interesting to him. He has some, something to gain, something at stake. Otherwise, conventions, regulations, even social graces, be damned. He is going to travel, fight, whore, and most of all, exact painful retribution against the Lannisters and their henchmen. 
Oberyn is a fire-blooded warrior who has killed many men in his life. He also has a reputation for using poisons, often on the tips of his spears, which is rather frowned upon by most of Westeros. Though he is a hot-tempered fighter and a scoundrel, he is not exactly evil. He doesn't harm innocent people, and he's not a corrupt politician like so many in King's Landing. In fact, he has moments in which I can see his thoughtful side, such as his intriguing conversation with Tyrion. During this scene, he shows understanding for Tyrion's rough childhood. Oberyn is a rake and a rowdy, but not a villain. Rob Stark, Chaotic Good. The young wolf, eldest son of Lord Eddard Stark. He was another difficult character to categorize. He is a relatively obedient son, but so are many children. It's not always easy to judge someone when they are living in a steady, controlled environment. What really reveals a person's character is how they act during moments of crisis. True colors come out in the big decisions and the tense moments. As the uprising king in the north, Rob Stark is a warrior and a leader who follows his instincts. In fact, many of his bannermen criticize him as a boy, inexperienced, untrained. And there's truth in that. Rob relies upon his pride and his strength and his ferocious direwolf instead of careful plans or complex diplomacy. Even his mother, Catelyn, is in a constant state of worry about his recklessness. Rob is a warrior of surprises, tricks, quick blitzes, and the unexpected. Despite all of this, his decision that really solidifies him as chaotic in my book is when he weds Jane Westerling. Rob breaks his family's vows to House Frey and weds a girl from a house beholden to Lannister, all because he just has the feels for her. Even though Rob is careless when it comes to decision making, he does have a good heart. He loves his family, and he's willing to go to war to fight against the corrupt House Lannister. It is easy to see that beneath the choices Rob makes, he wants justice for his homeland. Ramsay Snow, chaotic evil. Ramsay, Ramsay, Ramsay. What a twisted soul you are. I don't have a ton to say about him. On the chaotic side, he is wild, untrustworthy, and unpredictable. No rule, law, or code is sacred to him. He is willing to break or violate any trust, written or spoken, oftentimes due to his own crazed impulses. On the evil side, Ramsay is about everything bad that you can think of. He is a liar, a murderer, torturer, sadist, rapist, and more. He is like a demon, far worse than even Joffrey. The Game of Thrones TV series does a solid job of showing how malicious he is, but he is even darker and more depraved in the books. Theon Greyjoy, Neutral Evil. And here we have Ramsay's favorite pet. The best word I have for Theon is almost. He resented the Starks for holding him as a ward, but he didn't quite hate them. He fancied himself a sex god, but most women of quality didn't quite fancy him. He thought he could gain honor and glory for House Greyjoy, but he didn't quite have enough of a good plan. He betrayed the Starks and murdered those who used to be like family in addition to murdering innocent farm boys. But you can tell he really struggled with making those vicious decisions. Theon just never had enough conviction in anything that he did. He almost succeeded, almost became something great, almost did lots of things. And then he fell into the hands of the Boltons, namely Ramsay. He became reek, a mutilated and twisted shadow of his former self. He later helped Sansa escape, so we can clearly see his deep regrets. 
Perhaps he's moving away from evil, but he has a hell of a lot of redemption to accomplish. Or almost accomplish. Davos Seaworth. Neutral good. Yet again, we see a character who seems lawful in some circumstances and chaotic in others. In this aspect, I say that Davos, the Onion Knight, balances out neutral. He bends rules, goes outside of conventions or expectations, and he used to be a smuggler. But he's also well-mannered and has learned a decent amount of self-control, even a sort of humble honor. He disobeys Stannis Baratheon a couple times and even ends up in a cell because of it. Yet Davos does not betray or totally try to undermine Stannis. He disobeys when he senses that the command would lead to doing something wrong. And he also has a knack for finding alternative solutions. Davos is often the voice of reason and morality in Stannis' ear while Melisandre speaks more bewildering ideas in his other. The Onion Knight sees Melisandre as evil, or at least incorrect, because he is a more moral character, and also because he cares about the well-being of Stannis. He sees the good in Stannis, particularly strength and justice, and he tries to bring out these virtues as best he can. Thank you again for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this further look at some of the complex characters in the world of Ice and Fire. As always, please leave a comment and make sure to subscribe to the channel and share this video. May your adventures be many.